right. All right. Shalom. I want to start giving more praises to the Yahweh. Ba'ashem. Yahweh Shai. Okay. And, um, to, all you, to love and charity to all you brothers out there in the battlefield on the four corners of the earth. You know what I'm saying? Pushing the gospel of peace. Okay. Just a quick reminder to the point. You know what I'm saying? We're going to go into um, Genesis 18 about um, 19. 19. We're going to let the scriptures bring it around. You can see your little topic. Yeah, this is Genesis chapter 19, verse 1. And there came two angels. This is Genesis chapter 19, verse uh, 1. And there came two angels to Sodom that evening. Nice and loud, brother. Start from the top. That was nice and loud. This is Genesis chapter 19, verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at evening. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And not seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with the face toward the ground. And he said, Behold, now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house. And tarry all night, and wash your feet. And ye shall rise up early, and go in your ways. And they said, Nay, but we would abide in the street all night. Right. And he, pre go ahead. Yeah. And he pressed them upon them greatly. And they turned in unto him and entered into his house. And he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread and did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom. Okay, now, if you give you a little background on that, you know, I want y'all to picture this. And picture this like this is happening to you. You know what I'm saying? Now, these men were angels. You know what I'm saying? But they were in men's bodies. Okay? They were angels, and they came to visit Lot, to warn Lot, to tell him what was about to take place. Now, these angels came to visit him. Lot prepared the food, you know what I'm saying? He welcomed them. He had respect for them. He reverenced them. That's why it says too, <coughs> in the scriptures, never be wicked or evil to a man just to be evil to a man on the street, because you may be entertaining an angel. You may have an angel around you, you may be entertaining. So don't just be mean to people and, be, and, 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 and um, being just do, be, doing malicious things to people because you may be entertaining that angel. Just because a man's apparel or a man might be looking dirty or he might don't have the same nice clothes as you, be warned that you may be entertaining that angel. That's why the scriptures say, be peaceful with all men, if possible. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's what the Lord said. Uh, now they came to visit him. Lot prepared this meal for him. He showed them love. He showed them gratitude. Go ahead. Right. From past the house round, both old and young, and all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Now, that man there. So I'm going to see Kevin. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to see, um, no, I'll put it like this. I'm going to see Kevin. It's Kevin, um, me, Malak, all of us together, SRS camp as a whole, right? We're going to visit somebody. You know what I'm saying? Now, whoever we go to visit, niggas come bone rush the door and say, Yo, Usher, who are those guys that came with you? Who are those guys? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's about to get deep. Who are those guys that came with you? Go ahead. Right. It says, Come past the house, brown, both old and young, all the people from every corner. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came unto thee this night? Bring them un unto us that we may know them. Right. Now, what do you think that? Do they want to hang out with them? Do they want to just, maybe the brother, maybe they want to just pool with them? Maybe they want to just chop it up with them. They won't know them. They want to fuck them in the ass, sodomites. Not knowing that these are not men, these are angels. And Lot went out the door unto them and shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Stop it. Don't do this. This is wrong. I pray you, brother, please don't do this. See, and, and that's how you know you're supposed to have compassion for your people because, see, Lot didn't say, oh, death to you, fucking faggot. Yo, he got a gun, his sword, modern-day sword. Right. He didn't Which, say, right. he didn't say death to you. He said, yo, I pray you, brethren, look, nah, there's still a chance. Don't do that. 
Right, he said, yo, y'all niggas is bugging, man. Yeah, chill out. Yeah, 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 yo, yeah. y'all bugging, yo, y'all. Yeah, don't be on that faggot shit. I right. got something for you. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Perceive, but that's compassion for your people, man. Right. That's how you, you're supposed to teach what? Repentance for your people. It's not all about death and destruction, man. See, yeah, you do talk about death and destruction, but within that is peace. Within that is repentance. Because you got to warn them, man. Because what are you going to get out of just pushing death, destruction, death, destruction, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, seven, seven days a month, every day of the, of the year, death, destruction, death, destruction. Where's the light in that? Where's the happiness in that? Where's anything in that? That's depressing. That's the nigga going to put himself on medication. That's some shit that'll make a nigga kill himself. Have suicide thoughts. Because all you pushing is gloomy. Yeah, death destruction, death destruction. Every morning wake up, death destruction, death destruction. Going at night, death destruction, death destruction. Where's the light? Where's the guidance? Well, there gotta be a balance. A balance, yeah. And, it's, and, and, and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wicked. Brothers, don't do that, man. Please don't do this. Yeah. Brothers, what y'all doing? Stop that. Go ahead. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known men, virgins. So he got two daughters, a virgin. Nowadays, you can't even find a virgin. But to have a virgin is sweet. You know what I'm saying? A virgin is meaning that you had no man touch that. That's strictly yours. You know what I'm saying? It's pure. You know what I'm saying? He said, yo, I got two daughters. You know what I'm saying? I bring these daughters out to y'all so that y'all wouldn't go off sitting what another guy's ass, what the faggot, what the fuck another guy's. I'll give y'all my two daughters. Now, see what it is, women today don't understand that. They say, well, why would Lot do something like that? You gotta think spiritual. That wasn't just saying that I'm throwing them out to you. That's saying that if you think about this, I'm giving you, that's nature, that's a natural force that those men should have had in their heart to sleep with two women. The version at that, it was a whores. He didn't even say, yo, I got two women for y'all. Paul is whores. Prostitute. He said, I got two virgins for y'all, my daughters. I give them to y'all. Sleep with them. Why? Because that's a natural course. That is a natural thing. That is a thing of the Heavenly Father up above. That is a thing from the spiritual celestial life that the Heavenly Father ordained man to do. Man with woman. Not man and man. Not woman with woman. That is an abomination. So he said, take my two daughters. They're pure, they're virgin. This is the right thing. This is the commandment. This is the thing of the most high. Do that instead of sitting. Go ahead. Come on. Uh, yeah. And then it says, when, behold, now I have two daughters which have not no man. Let me pray, I mean, let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you and do ye to them as is good in your eyes only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. Now how righteous is a man is that? How many guys will say today, if they see a mob of niggas coming to the house, and you got sons that say, yo, bring your sons out, we wanna fuck them in the ass. That's right, because I have to speak with boldness. I have to speak to a point that you understand what I'm saying. So I have to make it bold a little bit, so you can get the real picture of this. Okay, so I gotta make it rated off, okay? So, if a bunch of mob guys come to your house right now and say, yo, bring out your son or your homeboy, we want to run a train on them. This ain't one guy. These are a bunch of mob of guys in front of your house saying, bring out your company so they can have sex with men, can have sex with other men. That was the lust in them. That's how sick those men were. But the man said, Lot, which was a righteous man, he said, yo, I have two daughters, take them. Go ahead, you can do what you want to do with them. How many men today would do that? That's his blood daughters. I know damn well I wouldn't want to give my daughters out for y'all niggas to do that too. You know what I'm saying? But he said, take my daughter, just don't try to hunt. Don't have sex with other men. It's wrong. And you people walk past the street and say, oh, as long as they're gay, it's okay. You know what I'm saying? They're people. But the Lord says, according to Leviticus 2013, bring that out real quick. That's a quick precept. Let's see what the Lord say about this. Oh. Go ahead. Leviticus 20 and 13. If a man also lie with mankind. What? If a man lie with also mankind, same, same, same sex. Go ahead. As he lieth with a woman, 
Uh huh. Both of them have committed an abomination. Both of them have committed an abomination. What is this story talking about now? With those men, even the lust, they didn't do it yet, but even that thought is an abomination to the Lord. So you niggas that sit there and say, people are people, you are an abomination with the Lord because you condoning that. Read on. They shall surely be put to death. What? I didn't say this. This is the Lord's word. Go ahead. They shall surely be put to death. They shall surely be put to death. Thus says the Lord. Not Shammai, not Asherah Kar, not Malak Abar, not Kevin, the words of the Lord. Let's sit on that, right? Their blood shall be upon them. Their blood shall be upon them. So when you condone in that and you say, well, hey, I don't have no parts in that, you know what I'm saying? They're just people. You're letting that vibration, that philosophy flow to the whole universe. And that's what, what that, that um, philosophy and the frequency that fly through the whole universe is the, is the work of Satan. And you're eating off that table because you're allowing that. So you're going to have to pick a choice. And Lot's showing you through the scripture with the story how what he did, what to keep you righteous. Go ahead. Back to the story. Okay. It says, um, do to them that is good in your eyes. Only unto, the, only unto these men do nothing. But therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. Right. And it, in ancient times, I have to bring this point out. In ancient times, a lot, a lot of us don't even have the moral laws today. If Ashar, recall, or um, I not invite you to their house, and I go all the way to Detroit and I visit them, right? I not, <clears throat> or, um, or Nazara, any other brothers, if they invite me to their house, to see or Sakari in Seattle, if they invite me to their house, I'm their company. They supposed to look after me until I leave. So if a bunch of niggas come up and try to hurt me there, and they be like, yo, we know you and stuff like that, I'm supposed to be protected by them because I'm this, in the shadow of their house. That's the, that's the hospitality, yeah. I'm supposed to be protected under them until I get home, until I'm safely home. Now whatever happens after that, that's what's gotta haunt them. If I go to my lock house, I'm to lock, I don't care if it was my lock big brother and his cousin. And they say, yo, we don't like that nigga. We're going to beat his ass. Malak is supposed to protect me all the way until I get out of that house. He's not supposed to know no harm get to me because I'm in the shadow of Malak's house. Right. That's how deep that is. Right. See that? Yep. Even if your brother be like, yo, that's my brother, my blood brother from the same mother, and he don't like you, he's like, yo, I got my homeboys over here. We're going to beat the, uh, a shot of a car ass. We're going to stop him out. No, you're supposed to be like, fight your own brother in that context, because Ashar is in the shadow of your home. Yeah. You're responsible for him. Nothing's supposed to happen to him. Go ahead, that's it. And, it said, and they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came into sojourn, and he will need to be a judge. Now we will deal worse than thee, than with them. And they pressed sore upon the men, even Lot, and came near to break the Go door. Down, brother. This thing is a marathon. <laughs> we got to eat it. Right. And they, okay, I'm going to start from the top. And they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came into sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now we will deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the men, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand and put Lot into the house to them. And shut to the door. They so you see how Lot backed it up, what I just said, he protected him. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and the angels pulled Lot back in and they shut the door. Who was it? Was the angel pull Lot back in? Are we there again? Yeah. Uh, it says, but the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house. So the angels, it was the angels which were in men's body, they pulled, my bad, so Lot here. They pulled Lot in, like, get up here. You know what I'm saying? Just shut to the door. Shut the door. Go ahead. And they smoked the men that were at the door of the house with blindness. Now check this out. Both small and great. Wait a minute. Check this out. Yeah. They smoked the men with blindness. <laughs> they smoked them with blindness. Because they were looking for them. Yeah. Yeah. So now. Yeah. So now you smoke them with blindness. Yeah. Like, let the story talk. Yeah. Uh, let yeah, the story. yeah. Yeah. They were looking for them. They were looking for some ass. <laughs> You know, men's ass, not, men's, not, not, not females' ass, but they were looking for some hard, bony ass. 
<laughs> you gotta be graphic. You know? Yeah, that's what I want them to do. Be as graphic as you can, brother. Yeah. Because that's what I want them to get. I want to give them the. I don't want to give them a Barney show. A show. <laughs> I don't want to give them a Looney Tunes cartoon show. You know what I'm saying? I want to give them something raw that be like this. You know, I, some boys in the hood. Boys in the hood shit. Yeah, raw, rough and rugged. Raw, rough and rugged. Raw and uncut. Raw and uncut. Fish scale. <laughs> Both. What? What? Fish scale. Um, it's negative. It's supposed to be the highest form of pure cocaine. Fish scale. Fish scale. The highest quality of fish. Fish scale. Fish scale. Fish scale. Right. Fish. Fish scale. Fish scale. Fish fish scale. even higher than the onion. I don't know what that well, is. Onion. Onion, onion is like a brick. Oh, well, onion is the quantity. quantity. I'm talking about the quality. Oh, the quality. The fish skill is the quality. Oh, it's like the deal. Yeah. You know how you get it? If you break it down and, and you pollute it, you, this one is highly been tampered. It's almost pure that you could cut it five times and make your money. But that's on the left hand side. That's yeah, yeah, cut, cut. Yeah. Okay. And they smoked the men that were at the door of the house with blinders. All right. Both small and great, so that they worried themselves to find a door. So they was like, uh, 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 uh. That's how they was, right? <laughs> and the men said unto Lot, Has thou any, has thou here any beside son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whatsoever that has in the city, bring them out of this place. Get their ass out of here, pack them up and get out of here. You know what I'm saying? Bring them out of here. For we will destroy this place, because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. Now you see, even back then, it shows you too in that aspect that the Most High always sent prophets, even angels are prophets, and send this message, warning of judgment, before judgment does take place. You know what I'm saying? He always sent out prophets on his word, or angels, through men, this message, to warn the people. Before the end of time, before it can take place, it always was warned. I'm going to go skip down to uh, verse 24. Right? All right, verse 24. Verse 24. There's another part in here, when they, even though he spiked this, that, okay, it must be here. Yeah, he spited them so bad that they still had that lust, still trying to kill for the men. That part, okay. Verse 14. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons and Lord, which married his daughters and said, Up, get ye out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons and law. They don't make a mock of it. When the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. So they told him to get out of there. Yeah, because of the iniquity. Yeah, which is what? Sin upon sin. Yeah, and that was... And I don't know if you missed the part in that, but it's the part in that is that even though when they got smited and they was blind, them niggas were still looking for the ass, still trying to fill up the niggas' ass to see where the man was at as they was blind. When you go home, like you smite, you be trying to, if you blind, you, and you blind, you be trying to like find your way home. Like, oh shit, let me get the hell out of here and go home. Them niggas had that spirit and that lust and that vibration in them so heavy, they still was blind. It's still trying to look for the men's ass and penis and try to hump them. That's possession. Desperate. Desperate. Thirsty. Super, you know, like, it was so into them, like, man, I still want to fuck guys in the ass to be a sodomite. And after they was cursed. Okay. Verse 16. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters. The Lord bring, bring, being merciful unto him, and they brought him forth and sent him without the city. And it came to pass. See, the angels brought him forth. After that, the angels grabbed him literally through the Lord. That's why you gotta have faith. You know what I'm saying? You ever think that something ever happened to you, and you just be like, "Damn, I can't believe it. I don't know how this happened." That's the same thing that you have to look at how the Lord would look out for the people that He loves. You ever been hungry, and all of a sudden you found something to eat? Or somebody just say, hey, what you doing? Here's $50, here's $30. You know what I'm saying? What that man just did right there. That's the power of the Lord. That was the first time that we ever got something that was a donated to us. Right? Since we've been out on the highways and highways. You know what I'm saying? That's spiritual. 
You know what I'm saying? Not for the money part. You know what I'm saying? But just that the person heard that and they had a heart. We, hope, we made them people open up their heart and say, after he left for a while, and come back and say, hey, that's not our doing. That's the Lord's spirit and vibration going through this. That I heard your word. And I broke up the foundation of the devil when the cops came here and said to y'all, y'all making too much noise. But then the Lord sent the man coming back and says, here. Y'all my servant. Here's something for your work. That was the man. That was the spirit of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah. Even after the devil first came and tried to break our spirits up a little bit. And the Lord came back and sent the man and said, Here's my trip, my son, my servant. Here's a little something for you. We win. Satan, you are liar. And the nation that's above you are liar. Your vibration is not going nowhere because we're breaking up the foundation of your lives and your philosophy. And a, oh, okay. Go ahead, brother. And upon the, the hand of two, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and sent him without the city. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look. Run. He brought them to the end of the city and said, Run, my son. Go. Escape for your life. But. Go ahead. Look not behind thee. Look what? Look not behind thee. Why did he say look not what behind you? That's not going to tell you that in that story, but why? Neither, neither stay thou in that in all the plain, except to the mountains, lest thou be consumed. Now why did it say, why did the angels, they roam to the end of the city and they get out of here? But whatever you do, don't look back. Why did he say not to look back? You know why? Because the city was going to be destroyed. And it looked for fire and brimstone. Right. But you know why? That's true. That's right, brother. But yeah. you know why he said them for them not to look back? Because you just was shown mercy by the angels from the Lord. If you look back, you was going to look back at the wickedness of that city. Right. Look back at the, the that city was a, a well wealthy city. It was a healthy, it was a beautiful city. So you looking at the material things by you looking back. That's why it was an order. Do not look back. Right. Keep your face forward. Don't look back. Because you'll be looking back for the lust of the things of the city, which was it, the, what the city had. You see what I'm saying? That's why he said, don't look back. And it's a reason why the Lord say everything. Go ahead. And Lot said unto them, O not so, my Lord. Behold, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight. And so I said, I, I won't look back, my Lord. I found grace. I understand. Fuck that city. I'm not going to look back. Go ahead. Thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me, in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. Lest some evil take me unless I die. So he had his faith. He said, he was gratitude. Lot was gratitude. So that he said, no, don't worry. I'm not going to look back. I'm looking forward. Go ahead. Behold, now this city is near to flee unto. And there is a little one. Oh, let me escape hither. It is not a little one and my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing, that I will not overthrow this city, for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou be come thither. Therefore the name of the city was called Zoar. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Yeah, this is verse 24. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire. Cause the Lord rained on, what's the name of it? Uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah, right. Brimstone and fire. Now, y'all just suppose that I was just telling y'all a story. Okay? Y'all just suppose that I just was sitting out here saying, oh, that sounds good, and maybe it's something good. Who got that? Bring that out. Yeah, I, I got it. All right, pause that now, because I want you to read that article. We're going to go back to that and show you real quick that everything the Lord says is actual or factual. It's not a mystery. Let's go get to the point that it's going to show. Then you hold your part in that. Yeah, this is the archaeological evidence. This is the archaeological evidence. Sodom and Gomorrah. Facts. This is facts. This is archaeology that backs up the Bible. Right. So the Bible ain't no fairy tale. 
It says, Sodom and Gomorrah, the lost cities destroyed by fire and brimstone. Nothing left but ashes and brimstone. It says, unlike historical sites found in Saudi Arabia and Egypt, you can easily visit the ruins of the five cities of the plain. The ashen ruins of Gomorrah is the best preserved site and is located right next to Masada, the well-known mountain top fortress of King Herod, where nearly 1,000 Jew patriots took their own lives rather than to submit the tyranny of Rome. I visit, okay, I visit Masada in 2005 with a large group and wondered what the strange looking white area was, was that. We had driven uh, through on the way to the mountain fortress. I even asked our guy, where is Sodom and Gomorrah? The response was, we, we don't really know. Some think it is under the Dead Sea. Later, I learned that archaeological researcher Ryan, uh, Ron Wyatt. What's his name? Ron Wyatt. So you can look it up yourself. What's his name? Ron Wyatt. All right. Had sent, has spent considerable time in the area and documented all five of the cities destroyed by fire and brimstone in the days of Abraham and Lot. That's it. That's all, folks. <laughs> and then, go ahead, go ahead. You yeah, 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 come on. The promoted my desire to return to the notorious city, see if there was, see if there was reason to be there were the remnants of the city destroyed by fire. I became convinced really soon after my arrival. As you drive into Masada from the main road that goes along the Dead Sea, you will notice a large parking lot on the right-hand side. The sign says it is for overnight parking and camping. Note that anyone would want to camp there. There's no water, nothing grows there, and there's a noticeable absence of all wildlife, a desert. And that's the power of the Most High Judgment. That's his plan, that's his, that's, that's his might, his strength. It still has enough to this very day. Even bugs can't be found crawling on the ground. <laughs> The entire place is nothing but ashes. That was straight up from the Most High, man. You know what I'm saying? And that's how you know that the Bible is true. Because see, this archaeological site shows you that this actually happened. You know what I'm saying? That was it on that. That's it. That's Back it. to that script, that scripture. Yep. It's because I did that. I stopped before it almost ends because I wanted to let you know that this is true. This is fact. He don't lie to you. Uh, this is Genesis 19 and 24. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities, which they found evidence. It's all over the place. Right. And all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Right. Go back to that part. And she, okay, verse 26. Right. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Lot lost his wife because she didn't have faith. It also showed that she didn't, she wasn't, um, she wasn't ready to leave there. And she, and she was stuck in the ways of that society. That, that's, oh, that's it. Beautiful. Peace. She wanted to be there. Her heart was still in there. She didn't have no gratitude even being saved. She was just saved because her heart, her, where does this scripture say? Wherever a man's heart is, that's where his treasure is. That's where his treasure is. Her treasure was where? Back in Sodom, even though it was a wicked, demonic place. Eventually, she would have been there long enough, maybe she would have probably, I mean, I'm just add on, I don't know this. She would have probably committed that sin. She could have she she been, been turned out to be, you know, she could have got turned out. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> some yeah. females get turned out. Turned right? out, he's right. Especially out. Especially now, man, a lot of females become lesbians, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or they be bisexual. They still fuck with dudes, but they fuck with females too. They think it's cool because they eating another girl out. Yeah. Tongue kissing them, man. And some of them, that's wrong. Yeah, that's, it's wrong. And it's, it's like they say that, that they're not going to do nothing to you. That they say that they know who's what and this and that. But what it is, if everybody would be that way, we wouldn't procreate anything. This would be an empty planet. This place, this world would be unlike, it wouldn't even be live. Because you would have, like, you would have the same 
like you, let's just say the whole world was just deal with men. All men. The whole world, everywhere you go with no men. It would be boring. See, we make, the women make us lively. And then at the same time, we make them lively. Yep. It's a balance. Yep. Like, they say, oh, he's cute, he answers. I can have his baby. They get lively and then they want, I want to be with him. You know what I'm saying? We see her, oh, she's beautiful. I would like her to be my wife. She makes us lively. Right. But if one of us was born and this was all of them, it would be war. Right. You know, all, even if it was just all women in the whole world, and no men, they would be bored as hell. They need us, we need them. That's how the Most High made it. Uh, <laughs> that's right. Uh, yeah, that, that was, uh, yeah, just a couple more verses. All right. And it said, and Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. And he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain and beheld, and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. So that, that frequency and that vibration, I reason why I read that and I gave you that, 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 that clue, because where are we living at right now? This is, this, 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 this is Sodom and Gomorrah. Yep, that too. So this, this whole frequency with the, with the right and everything like that, letting everybody do what they want to do, that's spiritually. That's what we have right now. So what do you think is going to happen to this place? What do you, if it happened to Solomon Gomorrah, and the brother read the article, that it's fact that that story really took place, an archaeological um, scientist um, um, went to the place himself and experienced, it said even bugs and insects don't live in that place. Excuse my language, I'm going to try to cut back on the person. I've been saying that to myself. Yeah. Um, not even bugs lived in. The bugs that not even a you know even not a, even a cockroach. Not even a cut. You see them cockroach. You see them little niggas in in the, uh, in the kitchen. You know what I'm saying? Right. You see it, but they're not even over there. Right. It's like no. So what I'm saying is what I'm saying. What the Lord is saying. I'm just his mouthpiece. Is that watch us around us, man. Watch out. Watch out. What this society is pushing out. Watch how they say. They got a book that says, um, I have two moms, I have two daddies. You know what I'm saying? Don't be tricked up. It's more than being for the kindergarten. For the kindergarten. You know what I'm saying? Watch out how you and your homeboy play with all these gay jokes. You know what I'm saying? With all these faggot jokes. You know what I'm saying? That's not allowed with men. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that was it on Genesis 19. You know what I'm saying? So I just, today, I just, Wanted to go to the short, to the point, just to bring that edification. And um, brother, uh, my father, Rashad, going to come up and tell you on part two with the benefactor. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, cool. All right. All right. I mean, hopefully we still got some time and uh, battery, but uh, yeah, just real quick. This is part two of this, you know. Um, get, uh, get Matthew 20. 22, and you get Mark chapter 10, verse 38. Matter of fact, I brought this out in the Avenger radio show last night. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because we was going over that about dudes want to get caught up on breaking titles, but your attitude shouldn't be like that. Your attitude shouldn't be, I'm above this brother because I've been in there for like 30 years and 40 years in the truth. It don't matter. It don't work like that. You know what I'm saying? It's about applying to the truth. Living by the gospel. We're gonna show you that. Matthew's uh, 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 20 to 22. Matthew chapter 20, verse 20. 22. Oh, um, Matthew 20, verse 22. Yep. Matthew 20, verse 22. My bad. Shalakia. It's all good. But, but Yahweh shall answer and say, You know not what you ask. You know not what you ask. Go ahead. Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of? Now, what's that cup? That cup is that judgment, right? Go ahead. And to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? Right, because remember, he told you that he was going to baptize you with water and also the Holy Spirit, meaning that fire, that trial and tribulation, right? So right. that's that cup. Read. They said unto him, we are able. Mm -hmm. Come, go ahead. And he said unto them, you shall drink indeed of my cup. You're going to drink my cup because remember, didn't he say that the servant is not greater than his master? And that master is referring to Yahweh Shah, right? Read. 
and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with, mm -hmm. but to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, right? but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. Right, prepared of my father. Mm -hmm. And when then, and, and when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation right. against the two brethren. Yep. But Yahweh shall call them unto him and say, You know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them. Right, so see these Gentiles, right, these heathen nations, which we went over in Romans 13 and uh and uh first Peter's the second chapter about the governors, about the king, all that, that's exercise of what dominion, authority, right? Those Gentiles, read. And they that are great exercise authority upon them. Upon them. That's what these heathens do. Read. But it shall not be so among you. It shall not be what? But it shall not be so among you. And that's written in red, right? Yes, it is, sir. And that's what Yahweh Shah said. Yahweh Shah said it shall not be so amongst us, amongst Israel. You ain't supposed to press your own brother. You don't owe no man. You know what I'm saying? So just because you're a leader of a camp, you don't control another man's life. And I always say that. Right. I don't control nobody's life. I'm there to upbuild brothers, but I'm not there to control nobody's life. Because at the end of the day, everybody in this camp is fully persuaded in their own mind. And we do our own research, we do our own thing. But we still want body amongst each other. Because at the end of the day, we're all servants for the most high. You know what I'm saying? We're all servants for the most high. So your attitude shouldn't be, oh, I'm above this brother, so I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna give him 10 push-ups. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oppressing the brother. Oh, I'm gonna, oh, this brother, oh, he fucked up on Jeremiah 14 to two, or oh, I'm gonna make him run 15 laps. Nah, man, you shouldn't be like that. You know what I'm saying? And if he, and if he did fuck up on Jeremiah 14 to, what is the right thing to do? The right thing to do is go back over it with him to show him the proper way to break it down. Okay, right. so now you know how to break it down right. You don't just beat somebody and don't tell them why they got a beating. Right. <laughs> you don't just give a person a beating and don't tell them why they got a beating. Right, or, or you gotta help them. Yeah, exactly, bro, that's, that's true, that's true. And exactly, you're supposed to upbuild them, not put them down and not help them at all. Right, just put you, but bash them. Bash them, that's it. That's being fucked up. You're being a tyrant. Right. You ain't supposed to be like that. That's what Yahweh Shah said. Be. And it says, um, you know that princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. Let him be your minister. Minister means servant. Read. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Let him be your what? Your servant. Your servant. That shit, that's how your attitude should be. One verse. 27. 27. One more verse. Mm -hmm. Verse 28. Matthew 20, verse 22 to 28. And I'm at verse 28. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. And that's what Yahweh Shah's attitude was, was to be a servant unto all. Even though Yahweh Shah was the master, but guess what? Yahweh Shah's attitude was like, oh, I'm the master, I'm above you. No, his attitude should be, look, I'm serving you, bro. I'm serving you, why? Because the Father set me up. I'm doing the Father's will. The Father's will is to be humble. You gotta have a humble spirit. Not that proud spirit. Right. And let me add on to that too. Just what the brother said, you know what they would think? They would think that when Yahweh Shah said he did the washing of the feet, when he told the disciples to come in and he washed their feet, you know what they think? Because they called him. They would think that he washed their feet is because he was showing them hospitality. No, it was more than just the hospitality. He was washing his feet to show them that I, even though I am the master, but I am also your servant to my brothers. That was the washing of the, the significance of the washing of the feet. Even though he was the master, but he showed them love and said the master can wash the servant's feet, which was the, the other apostles. They were servants. 
but he was just, he did a servant, he did a gratitude to be a servant of servant by taking that step to be the most high son and bowed himself down in a lower state to wash the apostles' feet when they could have washed his feet. That's a lowly spirit, that's a humble spirit. Go ahead. That was it on that. Yeah, Mark, he's gonna get Mark 10 and 38. Mark 10 and 38. But Yahushai said unto them, Ye know not what ye have. Can ye drink? Now, this is the same thing. So now, what Matthew said, Luke said it, what Mark said it, and then Luke said it as well. You know what I'm saying? So we're just bringing out two or three witnesses, like the scripture said. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, you know, the truth shall be established, roughly paraphrased. Right. Can ye drink of the cup that I drink of? Mm -hmm. Can can and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? Right. And they said unto him, We can. And Jehoshaphat said unto them, Ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of. Right. And with the baptism that I am baptized with, all shall ye be baptized. Mm -hmm. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give, right. but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. Right. And when the ten heard it, they began to be much displeased right. with James and John. Uh -huh. But the I called them to him and said, and said unto them, Ye know that they which are counted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. Exercise lordship over them. Read. And their great ones exercise authority upon them. Uh huh. But so shall it not be among you. So shall it what? So shall it not be among you. So Yahweh Shah said you ain't supposed to be like that. You ain't supposed to be a tyrant over your brother. You ain't supposed to tell the brother to suffer wrongfully because you were 10,000 captain, nigga. Where's that in the Bible, nigga? You misusing the scriptures to oppress your brother. And the Lord's gonna deal with you if y'all don't repent. That's right. You know what I'm saying? You telling brothers to suffer wrongfully, but that's not talking about suffering wrongfully from your brother. It's talking about amongst the heathen. Right. And we went over that a little bit. Under your oppressors. Under your oppressors. Not under your brother. That makes a lot of sense though. Think about that. Yeah. If you would you make somebody that you love and that you care about, would you mistreat them? Would you make them would you um rob them, steal from them, and then abuse them? Because that's what you would be doing, be an extortion. Like, give me your money. Pay all this money to me. You know what I'm saying? Oh, shut up, don't say nothing, brother. We need that money, and just listen to what I say. Don't ask questions. Anytime you, a man will tell you that you can't ask him a question, you better start opening up your mind. That man ain't right. Because if, he, if you ask a question, and he can't, and he gets mad before you ask him a question, that's like a teacher telling you, yo, get out of my room. You go to the dean's office because you asked me a question. Where you hear that at? Right. That's right. Whosoever, but so shall it not be among you, uh -huh. but whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. Right. Whoever is great among you shall be your minister. Servant. A servant. Right. Uh -huh. And whosoever of you will be the chief of chiefest shall be the servant of all. Shall be the servant of all. So your attitude should be a servant, serving your brother. Be brotherly towards your brother. Not caught up on regular titles. You know what I'm saying? Yo, yo, Serving your brother. Yo, yo, Go ahead. No. Even the son of man no, came no, not to be ministered unto, but to minister. But to minister. Go ahead. And to give his life a ransom for many. Exactly. He gave a, a life a ransom to the whole nation of Israel. You know what I'm saying? Being a minister, being a servant to his people. Now get Luke 22 and uh, 14. Luke <clears throat> chapter 22, verse 14. And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Right. Before I suffer. That's that cup. Yeah. That's that cup. Verse 16. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of your house. 
And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of that vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Right, meaning that wine. I'm not going to drink this wine until the kingdom of heaven is established. Go ahead. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And that's what the Passover represents. That represents Yahawashah being that sacrifice. That's the day of atonement, Yahawashah, when he shed his blood for the Israel. You know what I'm saying? That's the Feast of Tabernacles. And then the Feast of Tabernacles. Now we're in the Feast of Tabernacles, dwelling with that tent. And what tabernacle are we talking about? That spiritual temple, the third temple being built up. And who's the chief cornerstone? Yahawashah. He's the chief of the tabernacle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, rough and rugged. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's the chief of that tabernacle. And we in the feast of tabernacles right now. You know what I'm saying? Sakawa. Sakawa. Tabernacles. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Verse 20. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. In my blood. Atonement. Atonement for Israel. Read. Which is shed for you, for you, Israel. Read. Mm -hmm. But behold, the hand of him that betrayed me is with me on the table. Now that's referring to Judas Iscariot. Iscariot right. Judas Iscariot.